Wait, there's something very weak coming through. I'm all like, but you can't wipe the droid's heart. I mean, they're buddies. <laughs> oh, it's R2 and C3PO. I mean, come on. It's, it's like Bucky and Steve and, you know, yes. the Captain America. You just, regardless of what happens to your brain, there's that one person or droid that, you know, you're just, you're bonded. A time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Hello, fellow Galactic listeners. I'm Aaron Hulian, and this is WSTR Galactic Public Access, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode uh, 58. Today, we are going to talk about those nasty, annoying Star Wars movie plot holes. Joining me today is Heather Allred. Hey, everybody. And Todd Hoffman. Hello. <laughs> Once again, you can check us out on social media, WSTR Media, all one word, all lowercase. And here we go, right into it with our main topic of the episode. And now for our feature presentation. Okay, Esquire recently published an article on the 19th by a certain Matt Miller, basically explaining that as, like, we didn't know all this before, Star Wars is filled with a bunch of plot holes. No! Nasty, annoying little plot holes. Yes, say it ain't so, but it's true. Despite their overwhelming popularity, the Star Wars movies are not perfect. Rather, some of them, namely the prequels, are very bad. Very bad indeed. That said, fans and critics alike tend to overlook some of the more glaring flaws in the saga. What are... In what are otherwise enjoyable movies that launched a pop culture phenomenon. Who needs a tightly woven plot when some artist can design a rolling ball droid that will sell a billion dollars worth of action figures? Oof. Mm. Done. That, hit, that hits home with Heather right there, man. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knife in the back from Esquire. Wow. <laughs> what do y'all uh, think of this? All right. Well, I say we just go through each movie and let's see see what they, you know, see what this article says and we'll we'll break them down. Well, buckle up. We're getting right into it. Here we go. Okay, episode one, The Phantom Menace. Why does Obi-Wan say Yoda is the Jedi Master who trained him when that was clearly Qui-Gon Jinn? Stun silence. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's more of like a uh, like a community training program, so there's many Jedi Masters, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> They're all trained by Yoda. <laughs> They're all trained well, I was by Yoda. Say, yeah. Well, I I kind of see it, you know, because Obi Wan's like a master. Um, it's kind of like getting multiple degrees from different universities. So, for example, you get your bachelor's from New York State, and then you go over to I don't know some other uh, college that I can't think of right now, and you get your <laughs> master's. Right, right, right. You go to Oxford and get your doctorate because that's how you roll. So it's like I studied under New York, New York, New York State. It's just as true as I studied under Oxford. So I'm thinking Obi Wan got his main training from from Qui Gon, but you know got his Got his uh, postgraduate studies under Yoda, as I'm gotcha. sure all the other masters have. <laughs> oh man! Or that's how I answer that. I don't yeah. have like a book to quote at you, but yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's my answer. That's a fantastic fan theory because George Lucas didn't create Qui Gon Jinn yet. That's the answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, huh. That's that's the which answer. Which makes there. me wa- which makes me wonder why he would write that in, and contradict himself but he's been known to do that before yes which is why we have this episode that's right all right next one qui-gon uses jedi powers to win a bet why doesn't he use them to ensure anakin's pod racing wins so he uses force to control the dice so um he can basically release anakin from slavery but he doesn't use the force for the pod racing that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Why do you That's... think Sebulba's, uh, you know, pod racer broke up? Could be a little Qui-Gon little flick of the wrist from the crowd. Who knows? <laughs> so there's that. 
Also, he probably knew he didn't need to. That's right. Yep. He got sk- he got skills to pay the bills. Yeah, he already took the uh, midichlorian, you know, diabetes blood strip test. So like, <laughs> he already he already knows like Anakin's got the right stuff. Yeah. Right, exactly. Exactly. Had there anything to add to that one? Yeah, I'm, mainly just because it was potentially the secondary test of Anakin's ah. abilities. He knew. Oh. He's like, yeah, mm. that's just that's a, that's an interesting twist yeah. to it. It's like let's let's play this one out. See how good this kid is. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Although like if that. he was, if he was wrong, he stood to lose <laughs> the entire ship and be stranded forever. <laughs> he would have just so. have to like then 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 it goes real dark and he has to kill Watto to get the parts. It's like really bad, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh why is technology so much more advanced 32 years later before the events in the original Star Wars? Okay, this is a major gripe. Oh boy. In, in the prequels <laughs> where it's everything's so shiny. What's your thoughts? Mm. <laughs> because the films I mean, were made later. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I'm thinking uh, yeah. in one in one sense, you could say that it's kind of like the Dark Ages, the time of the Empire. Okay, uh, where pretty much all adva- advancements in technology are kind of put on hold because of this whole galactic war thing going on. Ah. And the uh, restructuring of everything and the empire is like, okay, you've got your your artists, your culture makers, your engineers, whatever. We're going to take them over, put them to work in Kuwait shipyards to make a bunch of adats. And therefore, they're not busy advancing culture or anything like that or art or what, what have you. So in, in that sense... I would say that's why there's not any advancement, but why everything looks older and like less useful in 32 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's, that's tougher to account for. Yeah. There's, there's a, a basically, you know, episode one actually used more models than the original trilogy. So there's a lot Mm. of, if you want to catch out a good book, a good coffee table book, uh, check out Sculpting Galaxy. It's like super awesome and it has it's basically all about the prequels and all the models that they use. And um, you used to be surprised how many models they actually do use um, because that's mm. one of the gripes is like, oh, they didn't use models. Well, yeah, they did. You just didn't notice, you know? <laughs> so um, very interesting. So, like, even uh, I'll take even the pod racing, like the Boonta Eve, just the shot of the cannon, uh, canyon as they kind of come in. And they look at the crowd and stuff. That's a model. It's a model. You oh. know, so there's a lot it's of things. It's very interesting because I know um, the majority of that race is like the environments are all CGI. Like in the S- desert and whatever. But, but you, some you're of saying it, there's a lot of models mixed in there? Yes, there's a lot of models. It's very similar, again, what he used in the rid- relig- original trilogy. Jeez, say that three <laughs> times fast. Um, it, you know, like where he does those... You know, Lucas is known for his edits. So you see like a model shot, you see a close up of a screen, you see a live action person, you come, you know, flip it back and forth. Right. But there's a lot of models. Um, I know I'm skipping ahead to Attack of Clones, but the library, you know, the library, that's yeah. a model. Whoa. The model. The model is like what, say, it's like set within a model. And, yes. Whoa. So yeah, everything, even like, um, the Emperor's um, like little apartment where they have all the meetings, like in Attack of Clones or Revenge of Sith, you know? Yeah. That's a model. Huh. So it's all green screen, but then they sh- the set, the, se- the actual set is a model. It's, it's super very fascinating. Interesting. It's very fascinating. So it's, but, like, uh, so it's like they're in a dollhouse. Yeah, exactly. But I kind of, huh. getting, getting back to the main point. Um, yeah, why does everything look old and broken all of a sudden? And I think that's, I, I like kind of like your point is that, you know, by the time we see Luke and all that stuff, they're not really manufacturing anything per se. And that's why the rebels yeah. are all kind of beat up and they don't have the, the slick stuff that the Empire has because the Empire is like just making machines and destroying mm-hmm. planets while they do it to, to get the resources that they need. So it kind of has a more beat up feel. And then obviously like in Tatooine, that's we're on a backward waters planet. So everything is kind of rust bucket anyway. So 
So there you have it. You do have a point there with the Tatooine thing because it looks pretty much identical in uh, in Phantom Menace. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like Naboo, okay. like the Naboo stuff is all sleek, but that kind of goes with all the um, the culture and everything, the Art Deco thing and everything. So mm-hmm. we've all also right, so got a ton of new locations that we've never seen before. Right. And I think it's reasonable to assume that they're going to have a different history and you know culture and how they construct things than anything we see in the original trilogy. So yeah. that's another layer of why things look different because all the places are different. That's true. That's true. All right. Moving on to episode two, attack of Whoa. the clones. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to quote this. How the F did the walking lampshade Jar Jar Banks become a politician? <sighs> Heather, what do you think? I mean, do I point out the obvious and just go to our current reigning? Oh. Ah, that's where I was going to go. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You let me go first. Um, Headed me off poli- at the pass. Politics. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Yeah. I don't know. That's all I, I have. Mean, yeah, you have a point. <laughs> I mean, well, what, what I'm curious about is that prior to episode one, like we don't see Gungans anywhere, obviously. Right. But you don't. You don't see like a good throng of them in Coruscant either. And I just have to wonder, like, are they a particularly populous or popular species around then? Like, is there some strange paradox where they're actually seen as like this noble warrior race and like Jar Jar just kind of like slips in under the cracks because of that? (laughs) Right. I really don't know. No, I think, again, like the... The Naboo people and the Gungans never really talked. Jar Jar, Jar, Jar brought them together, man. Jar Jar brought them together, but oh, you got a got a little thing under there. So, so <laughs> he's got that on his on well, his political record. Yeah, I mean, obviously in Attack of the Clones, you know, uh, Jar Jar greets Padme, so they're buddy buddy on you know, or greets uh, Anakin and Obi Wan, and and he's in little Padme circle. But it is kind of interesting. The, the, you know, the payoff is like, I got to go to Naboo and you're going to take over and there's no like election or like <laughs> vote. Yeah. <laughs> the Senator, the Senator, you know, like the Naboo people like turn in on C-SPAN and they're looking, watching the Galactic Senate and all of a sudden they say Jar Jar, like <laughs> doing his thing. You're like, ah, I thought Padme was our <laughs> Senator. <laughs> Do we vote on this? <laughs> uh, do you think so, the uh the jawas like hacked uh their version of facebook <laughs> posted a bunch of fake news right and hacked exactly. their election got them elected right that's or what is happened, it, right right no i think it's like some kind of snapchat feature that they changed padme into jar jar and that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> everyone just got confused yeah everyone got confused <laughs> oh padme right. was on the ballot what did we do oh, what do we do <laughs> all right why was it never explained why Jedi Master Sifo Dyas, Dyas ordered the clone army? I never really understood that either. Um, when my brother was like four or five, okay, maybe six, he okay. was in this stage where he would watch the same movies over and over and over again, mm-hmm. which is why I have Finding Nemo me- memorized. Uh Attack of the Clones was one such movie. Um, actually, all the prequels. That's why, like, all the DVDs are pretty much unwatchable because they've been scratched so much. So maybe that's a blessing. But uh, hey-o. Hey-o. Oh, hey-o. so um, so ep- so I've seen episode two plenty of times uh, in bits and pieces. But yeah, that that never really made sense to me because a we don't know who Sifo-Dyas is. B like, why would he order a clone army, you know, if it's to help the Republic? Um, I can think of a reason why is if he's in cahoots with Palpatine, you know, b- before uh, episode two ever happens and Palpatine just kind of manipulates him into doing so um, purportedly to help the Jedi order. But then, you know, Palpatine is basically just lining up the dominoes at this point. Um but that's not told to us. We have to infer yeah. that. And yeah, pretty I mean, much like every entry on Wikipedia, it's just filled <laughs> with fan theory. Right, right. No, I mean, 
Basically, Sifo Dias, the way I, I mean, if you read between the lines, he did order the army, but Count Dooku came in and basically took him out. And then he was the one funding the Caminos to get the clones going. And obviously, it takes a while to get the clones going. So they didn't really need to, you know you know, check in on Sifo Dias, you know, so just they, they, they kept on seeing that, that bank account, you know, go up or like, okay, they're still getting funds. Yeah. And that's how, you know, again, Dooku and hooked up with Django to set up the, clo- you know, to make sure that that was a clone and that kind of thing. I, I, that's what we have to assume, but you're right. It's kind of a major plot point that we really don't, A, we never seen Sifo Dias and B, we don't even know like, Obviously, the clones were going and doing their thing uh, for a couple years before, you know, Obi-Wan discovers them, you know, so. Yeah, I guess uh, to me, this is the part of Star Wars where it feels more like a spy thriller or like a noir story. And I don't think it really works in that yeah. regard. Yeah. Um, all the time. Maybe if it's done in the right way, but certainly here, it's just like there's too much going on for this to work. Right. Any thoughts, Heather? Uh, no, actually, um, I, <laughs> I, yeah, um, no, I literally read this question and I was like, I don't know who C- Sifo Dias is. Should I know who that is? I don't know. I don't, you know, I had to like Google him. Uh, he's so, the guy who's responsible for putting in the order to, uh, uh, to build the clone army. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. he, he, he had that one click installed on or set up on Amazon and he's like, okay, here we go. One massive <laughs> clone it. army, please <laughs> buy it now. Yep. Uh, so, nice. okay. Yeah. All right. Why does Count Dooku just tell Obi-Wan the Sith strategy for undermining the Senate? I don't think this is a plot hole. I, I, this is like the Sith way. I mean, he basically says, did you know that, you know, the Senate is controlled by a Sith Lord. I mm. mean, he lays he lays it out. He, he he's flexing right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just strategy. That, that makes sense to me. I mean, yeah. I don't see this as a plot hole either. This is no. like a character trait or character mm-hmm. flaw, which is not necessary. Like, okay, plot holes are not characters making mistakes. Right. Uh, plot holes are just like. Something should have happened, but didn't happen. Or <laughs> something right. should have happened, but it, you, you, you get it. Yeah, uh, we, we got it. We got it. Thank you, though. Thank you for that explanation. <laughs> I I don't think, I, I mean, I think this is just, I think Dooku is flexing his muscle and flexing the strategy. I, I don't think he got this cleared by, you know, Papa P, but I think he just said he lays it. The truth sometimes sounds so weird that it's like, well, you have to be lying because that is right. ridiculous. Yeah. So. I, I wrote down a note that said it's a confusion tactic. Like I'm going to confuse the other side by not being the bad guy and telling the mm. truth. Mm, there you go. Yeah. All right. Rounding out the prequels. Episode three, Revenge of the Sith. If Chewbacca always knew the Jedi were real, why didn't Han believe him? Hmm. Aaron, what say you? Heather? Oh, oh okay. I'll go then. <laughs> yeah, you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I guess it's anal- analogous to like, uh, not naming names here, but the a friend who is into certain conspiracy theories and that you don't really buy into. Okay. Um, except then it turns out to be correct, and you're like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> what else are they right about <laughs> right right exactly yeah. right yeah i would say the same thing i mean just because like we all love star wars or whatever i you know there could be other things that like i don't believe like i could say hey i believe in ghost and go uh, and then heather could be like no that's not true you know so i mean just because they're right. buddies you know they're like best friends right. it doesn't mean like you have the same belief structure you know Okay, mm. you hung out with Yoda in a tree. Who cares? You know, like, I don't, I haven't seen Yoda. I don't know who, he, you know, it's like, so I, I don't really, you know. 
I mean, we see this transformation in Han himself in yes. A New Hope, where he yes. goes from like uh, ancient weapons and hokey religions are no match for a good blaster at your side. Right. And then he ends up, you know, telling Luke, may the force be with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. I mean, this is the yeah. exact issue he changed his mind on. So, yeah, right. it's it's plausible that uh, Han is very much a, a an empiricist. He needs to see the evidence. And yes. so for as long as he's known Chewbacca going across the galaxy one side to the other, he's not seen any any uh, any evidence for this until he does. <laughs> right. So, exactly. Exactly. Once again, not really a plot hole, more of a character flaw. Yes. So this next one is kind of like, it's also uh, basically a new hope in, in general, but uh, it's here. So it says, why, why did they hide Luke on Vader's home planet and even have him keep the Skywalker name? So, so this is the, mm. <laughs> this is like the whole thing with like a new hope. It's just like, okay, so he's on his dad's home planet. He keeps the, his dad's surname, and you went from Obi Wan Kenobi to Old Ben, um, <laughs> and you're going to protect him. It's like that's the mm. plot of A New Hope. It's like I don't know if that's such a good idea, man. <laughs> Heather, what do you think mm. about this one? What do you think about this one? I mean, there's something to be said about hiding in plain sight. You know, mm. mm-hmm. it, it's what a the last place you're going to look for him. And if you kind of keep to yourself, people might not even notice you. True. I mean, that, that was my you initial have like thought. A, I was about to say, you ever have a job interview coming up later during the day? You got to leave in like five minutes and uh, you can't find your belt. And you're looking all <laughs> over the place for it. And you're like, where's my belt? Are you wearing like the you belt? Can't go to the, and you can't wear another belt that you have because it won't match. And then right, you look yeah. like a doofus. Right, but right, you got to yeah. have a belt, otherwise you look like an even bigger doofus. That's correct. So you're correct. about to give up, and then the belt's literally under. like the first place that you had looked, it's like like three inches to the left of where <laughs> you look. You're like, ah, oh, oh, there it is. There oh. it is. Same, same idea. Uh, Luke, Luke was Darth Vader's belt, and he, yeah. he just he couldn't find him. Couldn't find but, him. Uh, he, was, he was looking in the wrong place. That's right. It's like Indiana Jones, another Lucasfilm IP. There we oh, go. There you go. <laughs> They're digging in the wrong place. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, why does Yoda go into exile instead of just going back to kill Vader and Palpatine? You could ask the same question about Luke in The Last Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I mean, at this point, I think at, at the time, he knows he can't defeat Palpatine. So that's why he goes, he's like, I need to rethink everything because literally everything blow, blew up in, in like two hours. The whole thing. The whole thing just went down, you know? Yeah. Like, and, you, think, you think Luke had a big, you know, existential crisis on his hands? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Imagine Yoda. Yeah, no, Yoda, the Grandmaster Jedi, just watched everyone die and felt that mm-hmm. in the Force. And... Yeah, his whole his whole thing, everything he knew was gone. So I don't think even at his um, caliber could recover from that and take on two of the baddest dudes that just took on the whole thing in, uh, you know, two hour time span. So Heather, what say you? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Yoda's wise and he knew he couldn't defeat. So he chose the secondary option I, yeah. I mean it's such a simple answer but it makes the most sense in my brain yeah no he was he was definitely physically emotionally you know spiritually all that thing defeated he's not gonna like mm-hmm. uh yeah i'm just gonna go finish this off you know um right. it's very similar you know it's very similar to how the you know in the clone wars they are chasing after grievous because they know grievous is causing all this ruckus but they're they don't know that there's all this other stuff behind the scenes and just because you defeat one bad guy you know doesn't mean like you're going to take down the whole thing and i think yoda definitely recognized that as well mm-hmm. all right moving on to rogue one a star wars story 
if C-3PO's memory was wiped at the end of episode three, how does he know R2-D2 is here or here? Hmm. Here, meaning here relatively to Two. Rogue One, I guess. That's what right. the question is. I'm thinking you- back to that old SpongeBob episode where <laughs> he's tr- trying to be groomed by Squidward into uh, a, a waiter for um, a, a fine restaurant version of the Krusty Krab. Ah, and yes. He finally, Squidward, like nothing he tries is working. Uh, SpongeBob makes a fool out of any attempt to teach him all along the way. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Squidward just kind of, you know, in a moment of panic, tells him to forget everything. Forget everything except fine dining and breathing. (laughs) And so he does. He turns out to be the model waiter. And But, uh, you know, the visiting, I believe it was a food critic, Mm -hmm. uh, is just absolutely floored by SpongeBob and then asks him, I've got to know your name. What is your name? <laughs> He's like, it turns out that SpongeBob threw out his name, and he goes into a state of panic when he <laughs> when he can't recall it from memory. It just completely breaks down. <laughs> so what I'm positing is, um, yes. whoever wiped C-3PO's memory, it was not a blank slate, but they left uh, crucial pieces of information in there, such as all those languages that he speaks. Uh, how to his basic programming, how to interact with people, et cetera. And I, I mean, do, do we know for certain who wiped his memory? Yeah, it was Bail Ograna, because that's one of the last things uh, that he says in Revenge of Sith. He's like, and then Captain Tilly's wiped wipe the protocol droid's memory or whatever. Is R2 and, with him at yeah, that time? Yeah, and R2 like laughs at him. He's like, hee hee hee. Um, okay, so, so either A, um, <laughs> You know, Senator Organa just like uh, decided to leave that in that, well, you know, basic information about the droids around him or like, no, I mean, like, like I would, 19 I would years say years or whatever that he's gotten to know R2 before they split. Right. Well, I would just say, like, even if his memory wiped and he got a clean slate and came back and um, he's going to be interacting with R2D2, it's just like R2 is playing along with them and just negs them and just like, Hey, you know, we're buddies. <laughs> yeah. C-3PO is like, no, we're not. And you know, he's just learned. I mean, they, they establish a relationship right away because they're with Bale Organa and Captain Attilies. So it's just like, yeah, he might not know him, but you know, he's going to know him. So in rogue one, they already have some kind of rapport, you know? So Heather, you're our droid expert. What do you, what do you weigh in on this one? <laughs> Okay, so I'm a little embarrassed by my theory, but I'm okay. going to say it anyway. I'm going to say it with Just, pride. That's right. I'm proud. Stand because up tall. Have some self-respect. Let's do this. So <laughs> I'm all like, but you can't wipe the droid's heart. I mean, they're buddies. <laughs> it's R2 and C-3PO. I mean, come on. Oh, it's, that's precious, Heather. That's wonderful. Uh, it's, it's like... It's, it's like Bucky and Steve and, you know, yes. the Captain America. You just, regardless of what happens to your brain, there's that one person or droid that, you know. Yeah. You're just, con- you're bonded. Yeah. Whether they annoy the heck out of you or you love or them not. to death. I'm just saying, right. this is how it works. <laughs> oh, that's I think fantastic. That's possible. Uh, yeah, I like that one. All right. Moving on to the original trilogy. Here we go. Episode four, A New Hope. Why doesn't Obi-Wan recognize R2-D2 or C-3PO? So, uh, I I think he's being the uh, uh, the cool grandpa and just kind of playing along. Um, because at this point, I'm pretty sure he's not he's not aware if he's going to uh, take Luke on as, as his apprentice or not. Um and so he has to maintain plausible deniability. And if he revealed that he knew C-3PO and R2, um, that's going to raise more questions and answers than, and probably more questions than he's willing to answer at that particular point in time. Well, and, and the question, again, this kind of goes back to Obi-Wan and a certain point of view. The question that was asked was, Luke says, you know, uh, these droids belong to you. And Obi-Wan's response is like, I don't remember, you know, owning any droids. 
So wasn't mm. he, you know, he, he, he coy, he, he's coy, he's coy here. And I, I'm okay with it. He is. And, you know, again, yeah, so he didn't yeah. own the droids. <laughs> right. He, he knew <laughs> they're like coworkers. The, the yeah. They're like yeah. coworkers. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, that, that'll be one. Yeah. That'll be one. That'll be, okay. What happened to all that advanced technology? Hmm. Hmm. Heather, what do you think about this one? I mean, you know, to kind of play off of what we talked about before, I mean, yes, technology changes over time. So, you know, I don't have the same cell phone I did, you know, a year ago. (laughs) So to have like (laughs) enough time pass, obviously some technology might not be the same. And, you know, you look at something slightly different where, you know, like the idea of a locomotive was this huge change in how we travel. And all of a sudden now, you know, we've got single engine, little tiny jets taking people places. So it changed. Yeah. And technology is regional too. So yeah. yeah. Technology is, you know, so again, it goes back to our early point, like Tatooine, most of the movie, what we see is Tatooine and, that's a mm-hmm. backwater planet, so the technology is not there, you know. Um, right. So, yeah, I'm not terribly, you know, hung up on this one. I think it's kind of relative. Um, and the movie was made in 1977, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like a budget of $5. Right, yeah. right. Let's so, I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Okay. Why? Uh, did- I, I do want to add one sure. other consideration. Okay. Um, you know how for a while, like we just kind of like laughed at all the things, uh, all the technology things that we had in the eighties because they were lame and yeah. uh, like looked like crap. Uh, but now there's like an eighties throwback happening, and we're like, oh man, like all those things back then were cool. <laughs> we just didn't recognize yeah. it, man. Right, right. We kind of have like this nostalgic, like, yeah. oh man, things were so much cooler back then. Right. Um, I think in thirty years, maybe all the Clone War tech kind of has that nostalgic, like, mm. oh yeah, that's awesome now. Yeah. Whereas maybe 15 years afterwards, we'd be, they'd be like, oh, those things, how'd they ever survive? <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. It's very, it would be Maybe. similar, like to, I'm not buying a cell phone. I got a ham radio, dude. Talk to anybody <laughs> yeah. around the world, you know. So it's, yeah, it's, it's the hip hipster mentality. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally like it. Okay, finally in a New Hope, why did the Death Star need to travel around the moon to destroy the Rebel base? Couldn't it just blow it up? What do you think about this one, Aaron? <gasps> Me? Yes. <laughs> Let's see. One reason uh, could destabilize it well we don't know much about the rest of the system whether there's like other uh other moons and planets within the yavin 4 system and destroying the the main planet could have deleterious effects on the rest of the system which they may not have wanted to do two uh it's pretty much a surprise attack or at least they're trying to keep it a surprise attack Mm-hmm. And that's true. We we don't know how long it takes for this cannon to charge up. So if they use their one shot, or let's assume they have one shot um, on the main planet, then they gotta like wait four hours for it to recharge. Like the rebels are gone at that point. Yeah. So I, I mean, by the time they have the second Death Star, they can fire somewhat rapidly. But I imagine at that point in time, uh, it takes a bit to charge. I I just think they like uh, I was thinking more science, which could get you in trouble in Star Wars. But I was just thinking they would, you know, they're matching the gravitational pull around the moon and kind of doing a little slingshot, making sure that they're in orbit to then get to uh, get a clear shot of Yavin 4. That's kind of how I I saw it. So they'd get there faster than if they just blew up Yavin then like slowly like put put it over there or or if they try to hyperspace in and there's too much gravitational pull on one thing or mm-hmm. other it could mess the sh- firing so i figured that's it's that's like sailing. Forget, space travel yeah it's like, yeah it's exactly like sailing. thank gotta you gotta catch the wind um, gotta catch the that's right that's the, right 
Yes. There you go. Very Let's good. not forget the space travel is just immensely complicated no matter how you do it. To avoid like running into things or never catching up to things no matter how hard you try. It ain't like dusting crops, boy. So <laughs> There we go. There we go. All right. Episode five. Empire Strikes Back. How did Luke get around the blockade of Hoth? All right. So Luke set scene set. So basically, you know, rebels are escaping. I am, you know, first transports away. Hooray. And they do that <laughs> through using an orbital ion cannon. And now everyone's scrambling. So the Falcon gets caught in, you know, like flying against three star destroyers, trying to get away from three star destroyers. But Luke Myster- just kind of floats away. Thoughts? Well, you know how you know how the Coast Guard has like the Gulf of Mexico locked down, yeah, um, to prevent any uh, narcotics from being distributed uh, uh-huh. up to <laughs> up to America. Um, yeah, guess what? Yet drugs, yet drugs get through. What? Um, what? No matter how how watertight your yeah blockade is, like yeah. some stuff's going to get through. And yeah. Luke either got lucky or. He had his buddy Han like chasing away yes. three star destroyers, and he's just like <laughs> slipping right through. Yeah, yeah. I kind of go with that one. Like, I think they were kind of focused on the Falcon, and you know, because again, Vader, Vader's you know uh, planet side, and he saw it leave, so he, he could have been like, uh, "Guys, Falcon's leaving. Jump on that. I need <laughs> to get those rebels." You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's like when you're it's like when your brother's late uh past curfew getting home uh-huh. but you're even but you're even more late and so <laughs> you wait till you, the the parents are like yelling at him and then you just just slip into the back door yeah slide, <laughs> slide, slide right in that sounds like you you yeah. you're, you're talking about personal experience there my friend <laughs> no 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 me well, and wasn't okay. Luke flying like a smaller Ship thing, a little snub fighter. That's right. He's got a little snub fighter compared snub to fighter. a huge. You know, he huge, needs just a small uh, hole in the situation to sneak through. Yes. So yeah. it's all plausible, go. people. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, th- th- this is like the pastime of all Star Wars nerds is to <laughs> come up with <laughs> come up with spackle to fill all those plot holes. That's the <laughs> entire episode. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, like this one, I don't think it's a plot hole. I just think it's semantics. But yeah. anyways, yeah. okay. Get some imagination. Matt Miller. <laughs> right. Right. Come up with better plot holes here. Okay. Why does the Empire only disable the Millennium Falcon hyperdrive and not the whole ship? So this is when they're on Lando. Or they're not on Lando. They are on Bespin <laughs> with Lando and Cloud City, and they're making repairs to the Falcon and they disabled the hyperdrive. Heather, any thoughts? I yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this might be where the super fandom would be more knowledgeable of life, but yeah, I don't know. I've got I've got a couple thoughts. Um, <laughs> L- Lando's got history with the Falcon, so. I'm guessing like he negotiated down where they're not going to destroy it, but just like disable the hyperdrive um, because he wants that baby. It's like, um, and another, another thought like added on top of that is uh, the Falcon's like the fastest ship in the galaxy. It made the, made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're just going to destroy it, that's like smashing a stained glass window. Yeah. So maybe even like some of the stormtroopers are like, oh, I've I've heard of how good this thing is. Like, maybe we could take it for a spin sometime. <laughs> so they're not about to destroy it. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe like sell it on the black market or something. Yeah, there you go. I I mean I think part of it is just it's just like what they did in um, A New Hope because Tarkin's like to Vader taking an awful risks they let them escape and Princess Leia's like mm. they let us go and and Han's like no no one's tracking this <laughs> ship sister you know blah blah, blah. Um, yeah. I think it's kind of the same thing 
providing hope for them to leave, but then, you know, uh, and, and then capturing them again and just like, aha, we got you. <laughs> um, it's the Sith way. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. All right. Luke became a Jedi master by training with Yoda for only a few days. Yes. I, <laughs> uh, well, I don't think, he, I mean, he, his title is not Jedi master. And, and in fact, even in return of Jedi, he says, you know, I'm, I'm Jedi Knights. He doesn't even say master. Um, I, I don't know about this one. Like for me, like, again, the whole, like by the time he fights Vader, I mean, yeah, he's got a couple of days in a swamp with, you know, good old, good old Yoda, but, um, He's no match for Vader. It's yeah. and it's very clear, you know. Um, once once the fight progresses, I mean, he gets he gets lucky, gets Vader in the shoulder, but like, um, uh, this kind of goes back to the whole point of you know moving objects with the Force, like, you know, like he's he's doing one hand handstands and trying to lift R two in a rock and Yoda and all this stuff, and he's trying, and you're like, oh, he did it, and then. When you get to the almost kind of the climax of the film where they're fighting, you know, uh, the Vader, Vader doesn't even lift a finger. He doesn't. He just sits there and all these objects are like flying at Luke and you're just like, right. Oh, dude, this guy's a boss. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even move it. You know, like he doesn't even do the Jedi thing where he's like moving and using any hand motions. He just sits there and just right. literally picks objects out and throws it at Luke and you're like, oh dude. Luke. He's trying to fight the final boss, but he's still like level five. It's like <laughs> you got some leveling up to do, my friend. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Any other thoughts with that one? You ever see uh you ever watch One Punch Man? I have not. No. It's a it's an anime series on Netflix and it's quite good. It's quite hilarious. Um there's there's a the the star of the series is uh, One Punch Man. Of He's course. a superhero who gained his powers uh, by basically strength training. So he <laughs> he wanted to become a superhero, and he just tried so hard and trained so hard that he was able to do so. And he accomplished this by doing 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, uh, 100 squats, and running 10 kilometers. Uh, every single day uh, until he trained so hard that all his hair fell out and he <laughs> became so strong that he can completely destroy anybody with one punch. That's fantastic. And he's so strong that he becomes bored of being a superhero because it's too easy. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not really in the strength training per se, but in the determination of will that made him that strong. Uh, not saying that's the case with Luke, but... We also have to factor in that he's a child of like the, you know, strongest force user ever. He might even be stronger. We don't really know how the force works. Uh, in that kind of the bloodlines there, yeah, the yeah, bloodlines right. there. The bloodlines yeah. there. Yeah. But it, it's it's plausible that he could at least become somewhat proficient within a few days. Mm -hmm. And Vader, um, and, and at this point, Vader is a little bit older. Obviously, he's not. Yeah, and he got you know. And, He's, He's more man. machine than man. man that's yeah. right. That's right. There you go. We're, we're tracking. <laughs> we're, just, we're, just, we're, just, we're just spackling away these plot holes. Here we go. All it's right. Like two cars uh, on the highway that keep following each other for miles. Right. right. We're drafting each other. Okay. You go next. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, episode six, Return of the Jedi. How can Leia remember her mother when Padme died in childbirth? This one's a big one. Heather. It's a lot of spackle, mm. you guys. It's a lot of spackle. <laughs> Get another bucket. Yep. Um, I, I, this is a plot hole. I have no <laughs> excuse defeat. for it. I, I do a little bit. It's some script writer just wasn't following the storyline. I'm going to be bold <laughs> and I'm going to state that. Ooh. I would say George Lucas wasn't following his own storyline. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to that. say names. I wasn't going to say names, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, mm. it's it's a big one. It is possible, though, to remember events that never happened to you. Well, um, that's a good point. There's 
I believe there's a psychological study done where they basically asked people um, to describe the time that they were separated from their parents and lost when they went to Disneyland. And it turned out that a good number of these people, despite describing the event, never even went to Disneyland. They were mm. they were planted the idea and they extrapolated a memory that they never even had. Um, I'm thinking this is what's going on with Leia. Maybe the Force gave an impression of her mother, um, but maybe just... I, I don't know how her family situation was at home being raised, uh, whether her father uh, had a wife or not, but assuming that he didn't, it, I think it's plausible for her to kind of construct a memory of a mother uh, from other people's experiences, maybe even believing in it herself. Hmm. Um, other Here's, than that, I got yeah. nothing. Well, I, I'm going to say I'm just going to throw this one into the old force bucket because they are both strong in the force. And she says to Luke and Return of Jedi, obviously, is images really. You know, like, and she was really sad. She felt like sadness. Like, I feel like, like, you, I, I'm kind of merging your idea and just saying, like, there was such a strong force connection between them that she could extrapolate some of those feelings. And like you said, maybe saw some pictures or informed those pictures in her mind or of like having that bond with her mom. Just a thought. Mit- Myth busted. <laughs> we did it. Speckle, speckle, speckle. Okay. Speckle How speckle. can... All right. Here we go. This is where I get I, uh, these stinking Ewoks. Here we go. How can two trees destroy an armored, armored battle vehicle like the ATST, the Chicken Walker? Oh, uh, mm. these... Those are big trees, I guess. Big trees swinging like that, coming at opposite directions. Yeah. Against the cheaply made, you know, high volume. Uh, maybe steel. In, yeah. Maybe it's, it's you know, out of inspection or uh, out of code because uh, <laughs> they haven't inspected it in quite so long. And, uh, they actually, they be, actually, uh, prefer, they did the this in, in uh, yeah, they did this in Mythbusters, man. Really? Yeah. They tried to bust an ATST with some yeah, kind of the same concept of like taking, you know, like two like two steel beams and like hitting you know um, the thing in the middle and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. They had a they had to up the ante what? and it finally worked. Yeah, I uh, yeah well, this one this one <laughs> yeah plot hole right. plot hole. All right, how did all right Heather? This one's directly for you. <laughs> oh okay, did, I'm ready. Every, pay attention. How did the Ewoks have a dress in Leia's size? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, these are the things so, Star Wars fans think about. <laughs> Plot holes. Plot holes. Well, so for those who look more closely at the um, the dress that Leia wears, it is got a boxy shape to it with then the ability to tighten as needed so i did look because i googled and i researched the whole thing in preparation for this defense this that's the kind of podcast that we like Heather. that's what i'm talking about <laughs> this is what i'm saying so like you know there's an entire village of ewoks who are basically making their own stuff I am sure there's a little old grandma Ewok somewhere <laughs> making little outfits. Okay, That's so amazing. like oh, nine year old so Heather adorable. might be talking right now, but just go with her. <laughs> okay. She's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we, we... That, you know, it's plausible. And I would argue it, it, you know, that they had clothing and they got it figured out, but the shape of the dress. Is boxy and kind of square. Okay, you heard it it's here like first. A glorif- and glorified poncho with some some elastic. Yeah. I yep. mean, kind of. And I wouldn't put it past Leia to know whether she made some tweaks to it. That's true. 
I, well, and we don't know the time. I mean, there is a little gap. I mean, it's at least a day before right? they find her, at least, you know. So, hey, got to get out of these clothes and get you into a nice mm-hmm. little Ewok dress. So, I mean, they also right. worship C-3PO. So what's going on <laughs> in the minds of the Ewoks? <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Sorry, here we go. This one. This one is this is I, I this one. I, I this don't one like. Hurts. Here we go. Yeah, this one hurts. Okay. Why do all the Force Ghosts appear to Luke as he knew them in his life? Except Anakin. Plot hole. Oh, this is the stupid Blu-ray special mm-hmm. edition. Ugh. But hey, I got a little secret for you. Okay. <gasps> if you if you get the 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 the, the fan edit, the <laughs> despecialized edition. Yeah. Uh, this is fixed and it's no longer an issue. Well, for me, honestly, I don't think Anakin should even be in it at all. It should be Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Yoda. He didn't know Journey of the Wills. Anakin didn't. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's like, what I'm, that's what I'm not saying. All, yeah, like, I get, you know, thing? we're saying the same thing. I think Return of the Jedi, you, you, well, at this point, you just, you assume, you're assuming already um, that every... Jedi can go into ghost form. You're like, oh, this is what they do. You know, they die and they come in the afterlife, whatever. But as we progress, you know, into the prequels, it's it's known that this is like you don't come back from the dead. (laughs) You know, know? so Mm -hmm. so that's where it's like, oh, you know, Anakin just dies. And then, first of all, he could choose how old he wants to be. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> what what about old man Anakin? Right, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't he didn't learn this technique. You know, this was this is where I get a little But we didn't know here's where it's hairy because at the time yeah. we, came assume, out, we didn't know there was a right. technique to be learned. That's right. We just assume all good Jedi materialize. All, all good Jedi go to heaven. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about this one, uh, Heather? Yeah, it's confusing. Um, yeah, like, why was Obi-Wan not Ewan McGregor? Mm. Mm. I Check mean, if me. they're going to pull the young people plug, you know. Why isn't know. Yoda young? Why isn't Yoda young? <laughs> right. Why didn't, why didn't we get, like, 400-year-old Yoda and stuff, like, 900-year-old right. old Yoda? <laughs> um, yeah, this was just confusing <laughs> to me. Yeah, yeah, that that one. George, I need you to explain that one. Okay, all right, moving on to, now we're getting, now we're getting to the sequel trilogy. Here we go. Episode seven, The Force Awakened. Force Awakens, jeez. Uh, how did Poe Dameron survive the crash landing on Jakku? Didn't he like eject or something and then drift down somewhere else? Yes. He well, explained it very, very briefly. Yes. Well, both of them eject because, again, like, you know, Finn is not even close to the ship, you know, when he wakes up. So yeah. how did he, how did he survive? They right. both ejected. Yeah. They both ejected. Yeah. yeah. So it's not really a plot. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. All right. Here we go. This one, this one's a good question. How has Han never used Chewbacca's gun? Heather. Maybe because Chewbacca didn't share his toys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I but I feel like there's legitimacy behind the funny statement. Like it's true. It's you true. have yeah, your own personal true. weapon. Yeah. That's I'm not true. just gonna start handing my weapon off to people. Right. It's yeah, like your own true. magic wand. It doesn't respond well to other people. My lightsaber <laughs> yeah. responds only to me. It's the same right. thing. <laughs> right. It's kind of and it's kind of like the same thing, like uh, like with your car or something. It's like, dude, I'm, I'm not sure. gonna let you drive my car. You know, this mm, is my car. Yeah. You know, yep. you're not driving daddy's car. And that's right. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Or maybe it, it's like if you're a roommate with somebody for years, like. You've been roommates with them for years and you've never worn their shoes? It's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> not no. my shoes. Not right. my shoes. Get out of here. Get, right. get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, okay. Um, if the Millennium Falcon was old garbage, 
How did it have any fuel? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Either A, yeah, it, it, it it's it's gotten a few upgrades uh, between then and now, and uh, it's all uh, sustainable. It's like a it's like a Tesla. <laughs> you just charge it up and go. <laughs> right. Uh, or I don't have an alternative option. <laughs> it, it just left left the building. Um, yep. This one, like, uh, is it Uncar Plot? Am I saying that right? Um, the Moof Milker that you know. Uh, one quarter portion. <laughs> one quarter portion. <laughs> very good. Yes, that was very uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, Simon Pegg would okay. be proud. So, um, I it, it sounds like there was some tinkering done on the Falcon. I mean, Ray's statement is basically saying. It hasn't flown for years, but that doesn't mean that it's not fueled up. And I, I would just assume ready for a that, test drive. Yes, yeah, it's, it's you know he's just tinkering, but it hasn't taken it out for a while. You know, so hmm. I mean we we don't know what kind of fuel they use. It's not it's not gasoline where it goes bad if it just sits for a while. Right, right, right. All right, all right. Here we go. We're back to the last Jedi. We got two. We got two. Matt Miller laid down some two one two questions here. Okay, why didn't they say that? Why didn't they just use a droid to pilot the Resistance ship on the cosmic Kazakami? Jeez, I can't even talk. Mission. So this, this is, is the one where uh, Laura Hodo. Dern just like yeah, just like hyperspaced into the ship, or yeah. this is a yeah. different mission. No, this is the same mission. Kamikaze mission. Okay. Here Feels like go. they do nothing but kamikaze missions. Um, <laughs> right. Because Laura Dern didn't want to do a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there we go. Um, I would say my thing, if it's like an autopilot thing, like a, uh autopilot wouldn't want to do that wouldn't basically say, Oh yeah, I'm going to drive into these ship and ships and do mm-hmm. a hyperspace maneuver. So I would say it's kind of uh, like a, one of like uh, a safety feature. laws of robotics. Yeah, yeah. It's like a safety feature. Self-preservation. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a good question. I just think, you know, you got to get a I mean, human that, to do that. It, that itself things. might be a safety measure that autopilots like, just factory default cannot make maneuvers like that because yeah. people are idiots and they're just going right. to put it on autopilot and they need to make sure, Hey, autopilot's not going to kill anybody. Right. right. Okay. So maybe that's why. That's right. Right. Um, okay. How did Snoke become a dark Lord? If there was no Sith left after return of the Jedi, Heather Snoke. Snoke. <laughs> The guy with Snoke, half the face. Woke? Um, I don't know. Well, we don't know he's a Sith Lord. That's first and That's foremost. That's the Sith. Well, I was gonna say. I just was. I was like, just about to say that. I was like, do we confer? <laughs> like, I was just about to ask. Like, was he though? And I'm trying to think through, but I think it just goes back to the other open plot of who is Snoke. Yeah. Where did he come from? Again, I he's this, wielding this he's wielding the force how he wants to uh, wants it right. doesn't make him bad or good or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, it doesn't make him a Sith Lord either. That's that's a title more or less than how how you use the force. So Right. Yeah. I think this I mean, question it, it, is a red herring. Yeah. Like it, how could or, anybody possibly know? We've got zero information to work with. <laughs> right. Right. Th- that 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 requires too much spackle. So and we already covered many of the potholes already in the last Jedi. So we're gonna we're gonna leave that one, we're gonna let that one rest for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Let it sit in the oven for a bit. Yeah. Is there oh so okay, that that's it for the question. So uh is there any other ones that are like, yeah, we didn't touch on this on any of the movies. Um, it's less a plot hole and more just like lack of information. But how did okay. Maz get Luke's lightsaber if ah. it fell into a gas giant? Yes, that is a good but question. That's a story for we'll a different day. I don't think we'll ever know. Yeah, the other one is the map thing for me in the Force Awakens. Like, 
if Luke, if Luke's going to a place where he wants to go, where the first Jedi, you know, started from, um, and he's charting that course, like how did that piece of the map get chunked out? And how does Lorson, whatever his name, old guy from the beginning of the movie, how does he have it? <laughs> and yeah, you know, those are kind of things like, you know, if, if Luke didn't want to be found and he wanted to go to a remote place, even though we're technically where it's at is not very remote in the grand scheme of the Star Wars galaxy, but it's mm-hmm. kind of like uncharted, I guess, in a sense. Um, it just seems just it's not really well explained. And I, even trying to explain it, like if you try to break it down, like, uh, well, he, he Luke knew where it was at and Han kind of knew where Luke went but they didn't know the name of the planet or where that was at, or like, that's kind of where it's like, and then R2 is trying to, you know, recover the map and he's got the piece, you know, it's like all this little, it wasn't well explained, I think for, for me. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Heather, any star Wars mystery keeping you up at night? Uh, Well, not of of historical nature um i'm honestly just more intrigued of where it's going oh um, yeah wow. i i mean i think for me and i know that this is repetitive to things i've said before but you know i look at the original i look at the prequels and i'm looking at you know the backside um kind of as one giant arc but then really three individual storylines um that's kind of how i i've i view star wars um obviously then with all of the thousands of um offshoots in regards to the cartoons and the books and things Mm -hmm, of that nature mm -hmm. that expand the universe even more but i'm just intrigued to see where they go in light of what they've learned from the the fans keeping so you know true to the originals kind of having this like downfall of the prequels and then like this reboot transitional from old school to new new school actors and characters and things i just i hope that they keep it true to the original a little corny not too corny you know but then just good storytelling and character development and and droids so (laughs) (laughs) come on jj do us proud yeah Uh, so i mean i think that's i think that's where my open questions are and my 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 plot holes like where are you taking it are you gonna make it so like flashy and you know 21st century. Hmm. That that definitely will may keep never you up know. Night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, keep you, I'll keep you up at night. Uh Aaron, any last thoughts? Um I mean I just I ex- kind of explained it earlier that it's it's become a pastime of Star Wars nerds to just yeah. Tried, yeah. tried to do their damnedest to explain away any uh, right. yeah. any plot holes um, or anything that doesn't quite make sense. And right. I think that's really telling because I think in most uh, IPs or most uh, fandoms, if you have like a, a mistake or a plot hole there, it would mostly just kind of sit there. But the love of Star Wars and the love of the world of Star Wars and the characters and all that... It's so strong that we're willing to do whatever it takes to make have it make sense. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's part, uh, I mean, yeah, the bigger picture, it's it's mythos. It's like you're telling a story and people have der- different variations of the story, even though they see the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's 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 part of the myth. That's part of the reason that it goes on, you know. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. All right. That concludes our main topic of this evening. All right, moving on to news of the week. And now the star Wars news of the week. 
All right, first up, Disney's dropping the star might be dropping the Star Wars name from Han Solo's title to make it more appealing in China. Mm, interesting so com- theory. Yeah, this is coming back. Uh, this is coming from comicbook.com and they ran an article basically saying, you know, uh in 2 weeks they pulled the last Jedi. Like it just tanked in China. 2 weeks. It, it's just like you know, so Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of a cultural thing, you know, um, it's not, you know, it's not as fresh. And, uh, and one of the things that came out of it was like, uh, according to some reports, the cast of Star Wars The Last Jedi simply weren't attractive enough for Chinese moviegoers. So there you have that, too. Um <laughs> But okay. the idea, the, the idea is because of the dismal performance of the Last Jedi, you know, um, dropping the name, you know, of Star Wars from it. Um, and one, this article goes says maybe simply calling it Ranger Solo or something like that, where it doesn't bring the negativity of the branded name of Star Wars in China, and maybe it. They get fooled and like, hey, what is this Ranger Solo? And they're like, wait a minute. This is that Star Wars. But they already got butts in the seats, you know. So I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting idea culturally, you know, like if it doesn't, if this movie is just because of it, it's, it doesn't have that same residence as um, the other ones, you know, as, as in other countries, uh, maybe it's just like, hey, if we change the name, they, they, we might fool them or something. Hmm. interesting right yeah. i'm skeptical um <laughs> just because right it's not unusual at all to change the name of a movie when you release it in a different country especially if it's across the atlantic um just because you've got there might be a movie that has that same name in that different country that's not in america and you're like oh well how are we going to differentiate it we'll just change the name or just something doesn't quite translate well, so you pick something else. Um, and if that's the case, they could release it as Solo, Star Wars Story, here in America, and then in China, just release it as Solo. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think that's the sole reason why, they, why they're why they going to drop it. Right. Right. All right. <laughs> Number two, Star Wars, Gwendolyn Christie, Fierce Phasma, won't return for episode nine. <laughs> so and nobody shed a tear. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, so Gwendolyn Christie was recently interviewed and just basically said, you know, she's afraid Cast- Captain Phasm won't show up again. Found the character's murky status at the end of Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Uh, quote: In truth, I don't know, and that scares and upsets me because I really wanted to see this character explored. I'm actually very interested in the character now," said Christy, and that's genuine. That's not just chat. It, it has opened up a chain of stories and events in my mind about who Phasma is. End quote. Yeah, <laughs> I picked this one because I just feel like I feel bad for her because she is such a wonderful actress, and this character is just <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, hmm. I, you know. Uh, some people were surprised that she showed up in the last Jedi, but you know, like way back in um, when vanity fair first ran the first pictures from set, she's pictured in it. So it was like, you yeah. knew she was in it. And then right. if, you know, if you, if you watch any trailers, she's in the trailers and it's like, well, she's there. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Like Hux, Kylo and Phasma all were on that planet, uh, is Starkiller base when it blew up. So they got out, they got out of Dodge real quick and got out of the planet, you know, um, you know, before it blew up. So I, I just, it's just a shame that like, you know, again, I mean, I guess they technically could bring her back, but like, yeah, she, this was just very underutilized, you know, and she shows up like, mm-hmm. a, an hour 30 into the movie, you know, <laughs> it's like, Oh, there she is. So, what are your thoughts? It makes about? me wonder if uh, Ryan Johnson has like an alternate cut of The Last Jedi somewhere where Captain Phasma is like the star of the movie. And then they just did a little switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> it, was yeah, a hard it was a hard edit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think mm, I think JJ tried just 
just have way too many characters. And this again is the weakness of not having your trilogy planned out beforehand. It's like yeah. you you set up all these things to happen, and then uh, especially if you have somebody else take the helm for the second movie, he takes it in a drastically different direction. It's like, oh, what about all these things I set up? Well, yeah. we don't know what it, to do with them. <laughs> right, we don't know. Uh, the other interesting fact that I heard is that, you know, I again, these concept artists are amazing. They do, like, so many different variations of things. And uh, Kathleen Kennedy was, you know, in, in the art department, whatever, and saw the concept of Captain Phasma. And she was like, we have to have this in the film. And so I think that's kind of where the origin came from. So I don't know if that was, you know, again, like JJ was like, okay, <laughs> you're paying my paycheck. So I'll put, I'll make this character happen, you know, and maybe, and, and it's also, like you said, Aaron, it's like not planning out completely. Her storyline is possible why this, you know, this particular character is underutilized, you know? Because we've it's said like it. she it's got a cool hired. character. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, it is. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah, it's a cool character. It's just, yeah, it wasn't explored well enough to no. keep being this like, hey, she's back. Oh, hey, she's back. Wait, is that her again? Right, yeah. Right. She, but she's so shiny. We love shiny things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of like somebody who gets hired on to an office job. And their one job is to, like, uh, fill out this Excel spreadsheet that's super complicated and takes, like, eight hours a day to fill out. And then somebody just, like, two weeks after they get hired on, somebody just makes, like, a really complicated script that it can all be done in, like, five minutes. It's like, <laughs> oh, why'd we hire you? <laughs> you have been eliminated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, yeah. It's true. It's true. All right, finally, I picked this one for you, Heather, because... Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Disney Cruises uh, is going to mm -hmm. offer a Star Wars and Marvel themed itineraries. Whoa! So beginning, <laughs> beginning, in, <laughs> beginning in January 2019, additional uh, and additional to going to the Caribbean, they're able to travel to a far, far away and the Star Wars Day at Sea itinerary. So beginning January th uh, through March, uh, Disney passengers can experience a full day of Star Wars activities including a deck party, uh, out-of-this-world fireworks display, encounters with characters from galaxies, and much, much more. And the same thing you can say about Disney. You could basically have a five-night cruise and interact with all the Marvel superheroes. So now, not only can you, uh, you know, do Star Wars, but also now Marvel. What do you think about that? So we're not worried about like R2 or BB-8 like rolling off the end of the ship, right? <laughs> like they're all contained appropriately. He's yeah. got like the suction cup string things. Yeah, oh, he's got go. the... So he could just yeah, go... Whoosh, 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 and then, yeah. you know... Done. I love it. And, no, and R2... They're different yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, R2 has, um, you know, jets too. He's got every everything oh, yeah. it, it, no. in that tin can it please was a, it they, was a lame joke ahead. guys just go with the lame <laughs> joke all right hey we're trying to fill plot holes like <laughs> this entire episode you expect us to stop yeah i can't stop i can't stop i i took that there joke and took it literally it's like and spackled it up i love it yep spackle right. it up so yep. what you're saying is now we can be those rich jerks on kento bite just getting one of those cruise ships that totally. turns into a turns into a ship when you go through a waterfall. That's right. That's right. It's like it's my next cosplay idea. Oh, yeah. nice. I think it. I think it's fun. I think it's a great alternative to people who might not want to do a regular Disney cruise. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, maybe it opens up doors for families that. You know, or having a hard time getting that 15 year old teenager off, you know, yeah, the cell phone. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> right? But I think it sounds cool. I bet there's Ewoks on board. <gasps> <laughs> I want to see that cosplay now. Like, a mom and dad is like the rich jerks, and then they got their son who's like the broom kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Make him sweep the deck all day. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. All right, there you have it. That's news of the week. All right, moving on to Cantina Chat. All 
right, Aaron, what is going on with you in Star Wars land? Anything happen in Star Wars wise with you, my friend? I've got something this time. All right. That's fantastic. <gasps> uh, so new semester, things are swinging in the gear. Uh, my Star Wars RPG group is starting back up again. Nice. Uh, so we're going through the saga edition of the Star Wars role-playing game. And uh, the ca- the campaign that we're doing is one my friend designed where it takes place shortly after the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, but it imagines that Luke gave in to the dark side and joined Vader, which oh, sets off tremors across the galaxy. So fun. basically... The, the Empire is just steamrolling all over the galaxy. The Rebellion is in, you know, tattered ruins. And we've got our group of non-Force-using uh, player characters who have been tasked by Princess Leia to go rescue Han from Jabba the Hutt. So we we've basically just gotten as far as making characters at this point, but I'm really excited nice, to dude. see where it's gonna yeah. where it's gonna end up. Uh, my character is a an Imperial defector. He's kind of oh. like the the uh, a Finn, not smuggler. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Uh, scoundrel. He's oh, the scoundrel sc- class. Nice. And uh, k- kind of like the Han Solo type, and he's. One of the other player characters is going to be like a combat droid. Um, we're taking an Imperial Enforcer droid like K2SO, and uh, he's sweet. Uh, he's going to be mine. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to own him, and he will follow me around. And we expect some hilarious interactions along That's, the way. That sounds completely nerdy and completely awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Nice, dude. That's awesome. Heather. What's going yeah. on with you? Anything anything fun in Star Wars land? <clears throat> um, nothing super duper Star Warsy. Um, but <laughs> Okay. Um I am starting to learn some photography, uh, which I'm mm. excited about, which mm. I hope to then potentially show up to like a C2E2 um mm-hmm. and work on some go. really cool um like character shots there of people cosplaying and stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah. So not quite Star Warsy, but geekdom at its finest. Um, yeah, that's great. Proper documentation, things of that nature. <laughs> right. Hey, there's right, plenty exactly. of Star Wars at C two E two. There's plenty. Yeah, there's plenty of nerdum at C two E two. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's coming up in April. It's so close, but yet mm-hmm. so far away. And yet so far yeah. away. I know, I know. So I finally finished Princess Leia. Uh, it's Leia, Prince of Aldron. It's a, a book uh, that, mm. um, yeah, I, I I started it before um, The Last Jedi. And actually, our, our good friends at Castle Run Weekly, Dan and Heather, they invited me on to their episode. And we reviewed chapters 1 through 10 on their episode 65. So go check that out. But they were smart enough and finished the book right away. And so they... They concluded episode 66 and 67 on their book review, but I picked it up, read the first 10 chapters so I could talk intelligently on their show. And then I forgot about it because of the last Jedi. And so I came back to it. (laughs) I know (laughs) I was lollygagging. Um, And so finally got back to it and it's a really good book. Um, I would highly recommend it. Um, It's by Claudia Gray and she really, gets in the headspace of young Princess Leia. So you get to learn a little bit about Leia, get to definitely learn about Alderaan and just kind of the starting of the rebellion. And it's super duper cool. So check it out. Check it out. All right. Why don't I wrap this little episode of plot holes, put some speckle on this episode and and get us out the door here. (laughs) All right. Thanks again for listening to another episode of WSTR Podcast. Once again, check us out on social media at WSTR Media. All one word, all lower one uh, lowercase. We want to hear from you. So comment, tweet, rate us on iTunes. You can email at us at WSTRpodcast at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voicemail, 630-557-WSTR. That's 630-557-9787. Uh, leave a voicemail and we'll play it up in an upcoming episode of the podcast. 
uh also um yeah maybe maybe next week we'll talk about the han solo movie trailer maybe i don't know i don't know it's cresting over the horizon (laughs) it's so (laughs) close for you know first it was good more america then it was like super bowl and now i'm hearing maybe olympics i don't know it's gonna show up it's gonna show up sometime so i don't eventually maybe before the movie shows up who knows (laughs) who knows well you know um the network i i forget who's hosting uh who's running the super bowl but um the network like released like who's got the time you know who paid for those time slots and disney paid for black panther a couple spots but there was no mention of solo. So some oh, people are skeptical. Like news. some people are skeptical. It's like, well, if it's not on that list, unless they, they want to keep it so hush hush that we're just like blown away. Um, plus they're playing five, you know, 30 seconds for 5 million bucks. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of cash, even for mm. a Disney film, I guess. I don't know. So mm. we'll see. We'll see. So maybe sometime, you know, it, we'll we'll find something cool to talk about next week. Don't worry, but sometime we will re- <laughs> review that that, <laughs> that 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 mysterious muse that is the Han Solo trailer. Sometime Unless soon. Ranger Solo is on the list, oh, did we look for that? That's, that's, that's what they're it. doing. That's okay, it. Okay. <laughs> you you got them, Heather. It's like. Ah, that ranger song. Spackle. That's not a- I'm just spackling <laughs> the plot holes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well done. Well done. Okay, everyone. Yes. Now, this, this is, is Podcast Day. Day. Yay. Spackle it up. Spackle it up. Get those Ewok dresses. Mirror it all. That's over. right. <laughs>